thanks, uh, Professor Satyadas, for a very, very limited talk, very exciting talk. I think Satyam has this uh, great art of combining a lot of technology with a lot of pedagogy and a lot of insights to life. I think that is really great because not many do that, and it's great learning for our students. It's not every day that we get to hear of the thought leaders. So thanks to Professor Das again. And we have a formal thanks in just for half an hour to all the speakers. Uh, but I'd like to now uh, introduce the next speaker. I'm very really happy to, uh, you know, to introduce a uh, old, good old friend, Dr. Shivkumar Kalyan Naman. Uh, you just do a Google search and you get all the information, like Professor Das. So he needs no introduction. But I'll be very brief in introducing uh, Shivkumar. He's currently leading the next generation systems as part of Planet Solutions Department at the IBM India Research Lab in Bangalore. Now prior to that, Shivkumar was in our EI Troy New York as a professor, professor of networking and computer science in the Department of Electrical Computer and in a System Engineering. Uh, he got a BTEC degree in computer science from IIT Madras. And after a BTEC from IIT Madras, he got an MS and PhD from the Ohio State University in 94 and 97 respectively. Uh, Shivkumar has, uh, again, like Sajar, he's into many program committees, into many, very active uh, in many journals, leading light in uh, various international uh, conferences. In fact, the conference that uh, concluded yesterday, uh, SIGCOM 2010, uh, he was the general chair of that conference, which first time came to India in the history of the conference. It, it never before has such a big conference come to India, he was general chair there. Shivkumar's interests are, again, fairly wide. Uh, I know his contribution to wireless, TCP performance, performance modeling, analysis, internet, and the list goes on and on. So I'm going to hand over to Dr. Shivkumar Kalyan Naman for my new research. I have a good constraint. I have a flight to catch, so I'll be in a good place. Okay, so I just want to, since uh, many students are here, I wanted to mention that uh, in my previous job, I had done a lot of video lectures uh, on networking. To any subset of this, uh, these words, you'll probably find it. I don't know which exactly to give you. So, um, okay, so uh, this talk is just a little bit of an overview of new uh, research. Uh, and uh, uh, one of the reasons is that I have returned back to from uh, US to India, which is a new phenomenon, reverse brain thing or whatever, uh, is that there are world class uh, research activities going on right here in India. Okay, so, <clears throat> So, uh, IBM itself uh, has been uh, around in India I mean, uh, for a long time and uh, more recently it's been grown, grown rapidly uh, and uh, so we've had more than 80,000 employees as of 2008 uh, and IBM Research is the research uh, division of IBM okay, and it has a number of labs around the world uh, and the uh, New Delhi lab was set up in 1998 and we also have an operation in Bangalore which is where I'm based. Um, uh, and our uh, sort of motto is innovation that matters. Uh, in other words, uh, uh, we look at, I mean, we work on things that are uh, both interesting long term, I mean, write papers, etc., but also uh, has to have an application to the company in the world. Um, and also, the uh, labs for, has sort of changed over time in terms of its uh, focus, um, and partly due to various internal considerations, but also partly due to the changing nature of the company. Mm -hmm. So uh, just to briefly, uh, to put it in a different way, uh, as you know, uh, IBM uh, sort of pioneered a lot of computing, particularly the mainframe computers, the IBM PC, and the, sort of the thing pads and so on, or might be familiar with. So uh, it started out as a hardware or systems company that became software, and then uh, a services company. And uh, perhaps what you might not know is that uh, in terms of even in India, uh, IBM is the number one. Um, uh, sort of IT company selling inside India. For instance, uh, all the Bharti Airtel phones or other uh, world phone and other suppliers, uh, other um, telephony, uh, mobile telephony companies, uh, IBM manages all the IT uh, for over um, uh, about 300 million subscribers in India. So over time, uh, we've been doing a lot more collaboration. Okay, and Smarter Planet is one of the sort of uh, cyber-physical system that Professor Sajal Das talked about. Um, and that's just an internal buzzword that we use and it's, uh, so they've, uh, uh, what, in a company like, as big as IBM rebrands the entire company uh, in terms of cyber physical system that is sensing actuation and control and computation, you know that it's, it's becoming real. Yeah. 
Um, so, uh, moving research has come out with a lot of uh, innovations over time. Uh, you might uh, know that Fortran was uh, invented at IBM Risk Computers, a bunch of Nobel Prizes. Uh, one more interesting thing I want to mention was in the late 90s, uh, IBM put out a computer called Deep Blue that uh, played against the chess champion Harry Kasparov and won a tournament with him. Um, uh, what you might uh, not know, or uh, some of you might know, is that uh, you're putting out a computer uh, called Watson, okay, which is the name of our uh, research lab in the US. And also it's, a, it's, a, it's a, sort of an allusion to Sherlock Holmes and Watson, okay, elementary might be Watson if you might remember, uh, to play in a, in a TV show called Jeopardy. So uh, so if you've seen Slumdog Millionaire, right, so the, the kind of show or a, a convenient or opening and so on, right? So, so I've been actually putting out a computer which does essentially artificial intelligence and machine learning and so on to, to play in real time um, against, against this thing. And, it, and it's a computer that's just a uh, self-contained computer. It's not connected to the internet. Okay? So, um, and that's going to be actually playing on the show starting in fall. Okay? So that's going to be the latest addition to this list. Okay, so uh, in India, uh, uh, we, we've had a couple of labs. The Bangalore lab was established in uh, 2005. Okay, and we have a bunch of people from all over the world and uh, very well recognized and so on. So, and of course, uh, Professor Rajiv Shur is also been part of the lab before. So, um, again, a lot of innovations have been coming out of the your research lab. I uh, just want to quickly uh, mention that um, the two major areas of um, sort of umbrella areas are, are sort of service delivery, which involves uh, various kinds of services that are delivered from um, global centers other things. So there are applications of, of various aspects of computer science. And another part is emerging solutions um, such as telecommunication solutions, banking, other types of solutions, again, which are driven by uh, the applied technical competency. So we are always based on uh, our business interests of the company. However, um, uh, the work is driven by a lot of uh, fundamental um, areas. So uh, there are a whole bunch of departments, about uh, seven or so. I had one of them. and. Uh, that's the second one, uh, which is called next generation systems and smart planning solutions. Um, our, at least that, this department's, our department's goal is to develop systems and technologies for the instrument work, including uh, topics that um, are in networking, wireless, uh, stuff like that. Okay? And uh, there are other, there is a department on looking at mobile enabled energy solutions and the usual stuff like information management infrastructure. Okay, um, uh, the other role I also play is um, as uh, a director of uh, <laughs> university research programs for IBM Research. Okay, so, um, so we are interacting with various universities at different levels. So since we are a research lab, our focus is on uh, research level interactions. Okay, and uh, just to give you an idea of what these are, um, one is uh, internally uh, the different departments have exploratory research programs and we would like to view our, uh, our relationships with the universities to support these these expert research agenda get greater degrees of visibility, and uh, we also have had a larger internship program this year, uh, and we have a lot of interns both from India as well as abroad. We have had like 90 plus interns just this year, and uh, we have a bunch of visitor programs and faculty awards and areas like that. Um, the uh, uh, another emphasis that we are placing um, going forward is to do a lot more collaborative activity with. So, so uh, we have whether it's direct funding programs or visiting programs. I just want to quickly flash it. I mean, so these uh, programs are targeted at different levels, of whether it's faculty or students as well, and uh, other consortium, other participation. Okay. Uh, I should want, I want to mention that we also actively hire both in India uh, at uh, the undergraduate level as well as uh, uh, masters in you know, and we participate in conferences like that. Just mentioned. Okay, so the what I want to mention was that uh, our goal uh, going forward would be to foster a lot more collaboration, okay, so that uh, we can see um, uh, in, in collaboration we do a lot more interesting research. Okay, so we try to tie in a lot more of that. And uh, the point is that with collaboration you can access real time, real world, I'm sorry, uh, uh, problems that we face, our customers face, and uh, work towards high impact research. Okay, so just a quick uh, uh, couple of words. Uh, Professor Sajindas has painted uh, an interesting uh, vision of the future, okay, uh, where we have smart homes or a sort of a mixture of uh, instrumentation, interconnection, and intelligence. Uh, 
So I think that the company uh, has been rebranding itself around this vision. Okay, um, the, what it really means when I mean, you cut to the chase, as they say, say in, uh, in uh, Hollywood, is uh, <clears throat> normally IT companies have been sort of focused on enterprises or homes and things like that. But uh, when you are talking about instrumenting the real world, you're going an IT company going to an uh, electricity provider and say, I'm going to instrument your grid and I'm going to become a supplier. So which means it's an, a dramatic expansion of the opportunity of the markets for IT systems. So, uh, so the notion of what IT is um, will be dramatically expanded okay, as you have more of these sensors and so on. So that is the true potential of what we call the cyber-physical systems. There are different uh, sort of particular manifestations of this such as uh, smart energy, smart utilities, transportation and so on. And we have research projects in these spaces. Uh, just wanted to let you know that we also do uh, interesting research activities uh, which are based upon problems from India or the emerging market uh, worlds. Okay, so one of the uh, interesting things of putting research labs in India or, or similar geographies is that research problems from these parts of the world are also first class citizens. Okay, and it's important to the company or, or our industry. Okay, because these are the markets that are going to be growth markets for the future. Okay, so, uh, for instance, uh, if you consider the fact that the phone is a computer uh, as a device, it is a window into the world for uh, more and more people. Uh, several billions of people have phones. Okay, and uh, unfortunately, the phone is not yet a computer, even though the price of smartphones is dropping. Okay, so that's one view. Okay, the, the smartphone price will drop. And a lot of people uh, are uh, use voice as a as a way of interfacing the phone. So, uh, what our teams asked. Uh, is if you just use an ordinary phone, uh, the cheapest possible phone and voice as an interface, can you actually build a parallel web? Okay, and this project is called the Spoken Web. It's a project that's been going on uh, in one of our departments for the last two, three years. And uh, just like you have a uh, website, you have a voice site here. And, uh, and what is interesting is we took out this uh, solution to ordinary people in the streets, okay, whether it was uh, people in urban areas, rural areas, and so on and so forth. And the people are able to create these voice sites or access it or navigate it and so on and so forth. So we are, just like the World Wide Web has all kinds of other problems like search, navigation and so on and so forth. We are uh, and then providing transactions over this, uh, over, over the web. So uh, systematically we are providing all of these things. So, so we were quite um, um, pleased to see that people were uh, sort of reinventing Facebook or similar aspects of social networking or uh, Wikipedia type of things on this. Channel. So, uh, what's uh, the power of just using voice as a, as a medium for, for the web or a limited form of the web uh, is quite astounding. And there's an example of a project that started in India and has been proceeding uh, and is part of a global initiative. Another thing we've uh, done in India, this is part of uh, my team here. <laughs> um, uh, uh, as you know, I've been made sort of supercomputers okay? um, and one of them is uh, called the Blue Gene. And uh, at, at, in our team, we have uh, some of the world's best experts in terms of doing what are called challenge benchmarks. So whenever you count the new supercomputer, you have to show that it, um, it sort of bests some of the uh, benchmark performance. And uh, uh, it was when Blue Gene was designed as a system, it was not clear whether it, uh, it will actually perform very well in one of the benchmarks. Okay. So uh, a researcher in our team, Yugish Sabral, who now leads the HPC efforts, uh, in, in, this, in, in our lab, okay, so, uh, so did some excellent work that uh, made this possible and because of that uh, the Blue Gene as a system started selling uh, very well and we've been sort of beating that benchmark or besting that benchmark every year for the last five years uh, in, in, in continuous succession. Okay, the other dimension, uh, I just want to mention a few topics in our uh, department, uh, is the growth of wireless networks. Okay, as you know 3G spectrum has been optioned in India and uh, similarly uh, broadband wireless access as well. Uh, if you look at uh, the areas of the world where 3G and so on has taken off, there's been a huge growth in data uh, due to interesting devices such as the iPhone and so on. Um, and as a result, uh, we are expecting a huge growth in mobile internet traffic, growth in what we call these machine-to-machine -machine or sensor network type traffic over a cellular system uh, or sometimes what we call a smart planet traffic and other enterprise wireless traffic. So here's a like a one slide summary of all you need to know in wireless communication. So typically in a wired network, or if you 
look at, uh, say, um, the traditional Ethernet or fiber optic networking, you have wires which typically have a lot of bandwidth. Okay? And then you try to convert those bandwidth efforts uh, using fairly straightforward mechanisms into bits per second. And you get a bit of efficiency of roughly once to one. In other words, you take one bit of bandwidth and you get one bit per second of, uh, of uh, capacity. However, wireless, uh, you're dealing with a very scarce bandwidth. Okay, uh, much smaller. In, in fact, the entire uh, sort of usable or interesting parts of the RF spectrum is only three gigahertz, compared to uh, several hundred uh, tens of gigahertz that are available. And then the conversion efficiency is also um, a trade-off between coverage and uh, mobility in the various types of things. Okay, so wireless networks today, the fact that they work, are designed to maximize the spectral efficiency to support mobility and so on. But a very very severe constraint. So it's a uh, actually magic that your phone even works. Okay, so, uh, and as we go forward, this becomes an even greater challenge. So one of the reasons IBM is interested in wireless networks, we are not a company like Ericsson or Nokia Siemens and so on who are selling traditional wireless equipment, but we see a future where uh, IT information technology is going to converge into wireless networks to offer content delivery, whether when you want to access video over your wireless channels and so on, you have to be extremely efficient. So this kind of efficiency or optimization uh, can be done only when IT goes deeper and deeper into this wireless infrastructure. Okay, so there's just a slide that says that you can put those red boxes for some uh, or capabilities closer and closer or deeper into the wireless network to be able to do these optimizations. Okay. And um, for a company, it's interesting because it's a 200 billion dollar business. Okay, so similarly, uh, uh, today if you look at Base stations, they are sitting on towers and so on, and you have separate towers in each of them. But in, in a country like India or China and so on, where the average revenue per user keeps dropping like crazy, uh, you might not even want to have these, uh, these boxes on towers other than have uh, just simple links to those towers and consolidate these computation and so on. So, this, well, this is a technique called wireless network cloud. In other words, you're using IT principles like virtualization, cloud, etc to support um, a very different kind of local access technique for wireless. Okay. So anyway, so uh, just wanted to give you a very basic idea of what's going on in our lab. And uh, the reason I brought up these examples, uh, these are topics that we have started and we are pioneering from here, which are uh, partly motivated by problems that are emerging here, okay, from India or other parts of the world. So uh, in other words, to do research in India is yeah, uh, is not just a matter of doing outsourced research for somebody in the U.S., but people from the U.S. are very excited to do research with us on problems that are first emerging in India. So, uh, so world has changed. So a lot of us are coming back here because this is the place we want to be to do great research. That will leave you for any questions.